Hello, dear friends. Welcome back to another video. Mm. This tea kind of smells like bile. I realized that I hadn't sat down to do a wrap up in a little bit, so I thought what I would do instead is combine a bunch of books that I have read recently and turn this video into a little what I've read recently. So I just thought we could sit down, hang out. It's been a minute since I've gone over books that I've read and loved or read did not fall in love with. As you can probably tell by my voice, I am sick yet again. This summer, this summer, it's really going around. I don't know. This might turn out to be just a really weird feverish book review session. Here are my scrambled thoughts about some books that I have read recently. The first five books that I have to talk to you about, I am sure if you haven't seen, I'll link the video up above, but I did a whole series reading vlog on these five books alone and it was a time that happened i did read them um and i finished them all thankfully and that is the selection series by kiara cass so um i'm missing one of the books here i'm missing the one so yeah i read the selection this was a reread for me because i read this um 12 years ago now for the first time and then i also read the elite this one was a reread for me and then everything from there on out was new content for me um that i got to read and consume so i read the selection the elite the one and then there is a spin-off series about the characters from the first series like their children so we have the heir and the crown um so yeah let's talk about them um not too too much i'll just give you kind of my final thoughts on the series as a whole here because that reading vlog holy i almost lost my mind so the selection is a ya dystopian series came out in 2012 and this is set in a world where um the united states is no longer instead it has become well, I guess North America is no longer. It's become an amalgamation of Canada, the US, and Mexico under the name of Alea. And in the kingdom of Alea, because it is a monarchy, everyone is split into different numbers in a caste system. So the people at the top, like the ones, the twos, and threes, have it really good. The ones are the royalty and our protagonist that we follow. Her name is America Singer because she's an American singer um yeah her number her number is a five so in this caste system as well your number dictates what kind of work you can do and what kind of job you can have forever like for the rest of your life like your ancestors are all gonna work the same job for forever so the fives are all artists of some kind and they rank pretty low in the system dystopian elements of this book were not very well rendered i have to say like at all i honestly had a pretty okay time with the selection the first book everything after this goes so downhill for me it becomes so nonsense so nonsensical um especially when you compare it with the masterpiece that is the hunger games the selection just like misses the mark every single time on the commentary about the system itself especially because the selection is all about this process this ceremony of the royal families known as the selection wherein the prince in this case prince maxon he has to select a bride in a dystopian turn of the bachelor i suppose where 35 girls come to the palace to compete for his hand like it's a girl from every single province of the country and that's how he's supposed to find his new wife the thing that i hated most probably about the selection series i did not rank any of these very high like i said i mildly enjoyed the selection and i think everything that was set up in here a little bit like the commentary that was going to come about the caste system and about the monarchy that never arrived and instead what we got was a very sympathetic picture of the royal royal family themselves even though they're pieces of shit and like they're ruining their country the people like the common citizen in the selection world is just starving penniless fighting for their life basically and this continues throughout the whole series but back to what i really disliked about the series is that it is so contained suffocatingly so within the palace walls of the royal family and that is that's it like 
that's all we get to see of the world. Like I said in my vlog, I have no idea what this world looks like. I have no idea really what the conditions are outside the palace and neither does anyone else and no one else seems to care. You follow America and Maxon's love story throughout. I mean, that's kind of the only thing we follow. The love triangle is really awful. And throughout the books, like you just start to root less and less for anyone. You start to peel back layer upon layer that there are all really just awful people. And it becomes even more obvious in the spinoff series with America's daughter. Ah, oh, it's just infuriating. That is the selection. If you want to hear about every single book in the series, everything that happens, every wacko thing that goes down, you can check out the vlog, but that is the selection by Kiara Cass. Um, I think the highest that I rated these were two stars. I would probably go so far as to give the heir and the crown maybe a very scathing one and a half somewhere in there because these like really made me very angry and I don't get that angry very often at the novels that I'm reading but these were just like what are you writing kind of thing so anyway I've been working on those books for a really long time as well I should say it took me so long <laughs> so long to get through the series. Then we have um, honestly quite a few romance books. I'm losing it. I need, where's my acetaminophen? Is any of this real? Are you real? Anyway, first up I read Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings, which I have had on my shelves for a while and I've been wanting to read ever since like so many people started talking about it on booktube. I honestly had a really good time with this. I had a really good time with this. This was like my before bed book for a solid couple of weeks because before bed, like I don't want to read some incredible piece of lit fic because I'm trying to get to sleep. So I would just pick up Magnolia Parks, which was very easy to read, very addicting, definitely very addicting. So this is uh, just a super toxic world. If you're not into following very toxic characters, very toxic relationships, don't pick this up. I ate this up. Main problem with this was with the writing style. The way that sentences worked, uh, that was a fever dream. But once I got past that and kind of sunk into the story itself, I was just hooked. I was just really hooked. I don't know how to describe it to you because Magnolia Parks is so repetitive. The scenes are kind of literally just copy paste and it's always the same petty drama. I enjoyed this. I really enjoy watching Gossip Girl and I really enjoyed reading Magnolia Parks and the two are very, very close and very similar. So in this one, we follow Magnolia and her longtime toxic boyfriend, not really because they're not technically together, named BJ Ballantyne. I don't know why they had to choose that name. And you kind of just follow them being awful to each other. <laughs> like you just follow them being absolutely the worst people on the face of the planet to each other. They have a pretty sizable friend group. It's all set in the upper echelons of London society. So they're very, 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 very well off. And they do stupid things with their money and with their feelings and with each other. Basically her and BJ have been, I guess, soulmates kind of. Uh, is what they would describe themselves as like they're very intense they've been like that for a long time but years ago is it four years prior to the start of the novel bj cheated on her with someone and he'll never tell her like who it is and so since then she has just pretended to date a whole slew of men to try and make him jealous and in return he has slept with pretty much anyone with a pulse for I don't know how long, four years, I guess this has been going on. And in this book is when things start to change because Magnolia starts to date someone, fake date someone that she might actually have feelings for and BJ might end up telling her who he originally cheated on her with. Throw all of this in the blender with like a dash of like jetting off to Greece and going shopping and like name dropping very expensive clothing brands every other line because magnolia's superpower is that she can pretty much like see what you're wearing and tell you exactly <laughs> like the brand name of every single piece of clothing you're wearing so i don't know some parts of this were really annoying to be honest but as a whole something kept me reading i was like i'm in i just want to keep reading and as you can see i even tabbed a bunch because sometimes sometimes some nuggets of gold were dropped in magnolia parks and i was like wow that that kind of like took my breath away and while i wouldn't necessarily say that i was terribly rooting very hard for Magnolia and BJ to get together. I just really felt like this described really well the absolute over-the-top nature of um, youngish love. Not like super, super young anymore because in the book, I think they're in their 
mid to late 20s but like love that has started at a very young age and so you, so you still kind of retain the person that you were almost at that age with that person forever so i just love this and i'm very i just really liked it <laughs> and i'm really excited to read the next in the series there were definitely a lot of side characters that i liked and yeah i would just highly recommend if you're looking for something quick addictive full of drama that will probably never ever happen in my own life so it was very nice fun escapism i'm gonna just pull up the next book that i read recently on my little book app um yeah goodreads thank you okay we, no we've crashed <laughs> ah, it's not doing anything i wish there was a better book app honestly because this is crazy so um what was that? Did you guys hear that? Sounds like f fable? Fable. You heard of this? So I know a lot of you already use fable, but for a lot of other people who are still suffering on the other big book app, shall we say, I would highly recommend you check out Fable. It is the all-in-one bookish app for readers, for socializing, for discovering new books, for tracking everything you read. Fable is free to download and it just offers so many cool features. Smaller details that I'm such a huge fan of is that you can give books like half star ratings, which I love. Goodreads lacks so much in community features, like just being able to message other users. I know a lot of people are hesitant to try a new like book tracking uh, all-in-one app because Goodreads has been around for so long and all of their stuff is stored on Goodreads, but with Fable, you can really, really easily just import your entire Goodreads library along with all the lists you have on Goodreads, with the dates that you read them, the ratings you gave them, only that, but it gives you really cute little stats, which I love. This kind of reminds me of Spotify Wrapped, but for books, it'll show you how many books you've been reading per month, what is your most read genre. So if you guys are interested in using a much more functional book app, that can either be a complete replacement or even just a nice compliment to Goodreads. You can download the free Fable app. Thank you to Fable for sponsoring this video. Let's jump back into the books. Next book that I read, I'm so upset about this. I'm so upset. I really feel like the odd one out in this situation, um, but I just want to give you my honest thoughts on this one because I did not like it. Everyone I've seen has just lavished on this one such high praises it has a very high rating on goodreads extremely high it's very popular and so i just feel sad it was also the book club pick on fable for july and a lot of you did have very similar feelings to mine so that was really nice so it's just really nice to see what you guys think and uh i'd love to like not that i want to name drop but i would just love to share some reviews and some thoughts so that this feels like more of a conversation with you sometimes so anyway let me just tell you about the book first though that is mm, as long as the lemon trees grow by zulfa katu hurts it hurts so bad literally everyone i had heard on booktube and everywhere else has just been raving about this i just felt like this was not very good and the more and more i sit and think about it i'm just like that was really not greatly done this is young oh my bookmark is still in here this is set in syria um honestly not sure at what point in the civil war slash revolution slash it's just it's become something so complicated that there's really not even i think one good word for it anymore and that's probably the starting point for this is that i was really looking forward to learning more about the conflict in syria over the last like more than a decade now obviously it's been something that's been going on for a very long time and that's what the author's purported goal with making a YA book uh, set in and around and during the conflict and featuring like young protagonists that was what the author listed as like one of her goals was to teach people and young readers in particular about the conflict I walked away with this with no new knowledge actually I don't think Pretty much maybe one little fact but i walked away with hardly any new knowledge about the conflict and it's not like i had like a wealth of knowledge about it in the first place so instead like reading this i had to go away i had to go away and be like okay let me watch a few youtube history videos about this let me go and read some articles let me go on wikipedia like i didn't learn anything i feel like from the book itself which was rough instead this really morphed into a ya not rom-com, but like romance set amidst the conflict. So we follow Salama, who I think is 17 or 18 when the novel begins, and she is basically like a volunteer nurse slash surgeon slash whatever 
the situation calls for her to be at a hospital because I mean we don't have we've been run out of medical staff and so she is a pharmacology pharmacology yeah student volunteering as a nurse she's witnessing the horrific um torture that is being inflicted on her people at the same time back at her house she has her pregnant sister-in-law and her sister-in-law is like you know what we should really leave syria like we need to go we need to protect ourselves we need to protect like my unborn child salama's family the rest of her family has already either been killed or taken away to prison and so she feels this immense guilt at leaving syria but also this immense need to protect her sister-in-law and unborn child so that is really the heart of the conflict of as long as the lemon trees grow is Salama's decision to either stay or leave her country in a time of terrible conflict that is just decimating the population and killing civilians um, and doing unspeakable things. In the midst of this, there is a romance, like I said, between her and this boy that she meets at the hospital. Number one, I think the dialogue in this book was pretty rough. It was really trite, felt very stilted, very stiff. Um, the way that people spoke to each other, I was just like, I don't know. Combine that with the fact that like they just kept saying very trite sayings to one another and always, always having the exact same conversations pretty much just about the pros and cons and like consequences, the mental consequences, the shame, everything that involves leaving your home country or in Salama's mind, like abandoning it in a time of great pain, which are important conversations, hugely important conversations to be having. Just like done to absolute death to the point where I just felt like I was reading the same thing over and over again. I didn't really care about the romance between our two characters. I really didn't feel very much, couldn't care less. I felt like there was a pretty big distance between myself and this book. It's just, I don't know how to, I don't know. Something just felt off. I'm going to see if you guys put it better because I remember a bunch of you just putting my exact feelings into words so much better than I could, but something just felt off about this. Maybe it was the young adult tone maybe it was the young adult romance tone the author says that she's heavily inspired by studio ghibli which i was really looking forward to especially because there is another character in here whose name is cough um who is a hallucinatory man monster darkness demon thing from salama's mind which represents her fear her anxiety her ptsd like all of this stuff um and i really liked him and his aspects in theory when they were actually translated onto the page i thought it wasn't as strong as it could be there were so many mentions of studio ghibli just a thousand <laughs> times just name dropped and name dropped and name dropped and i'm like okay but it's not really doing very much like the storytelling in here i thought was very weak it's so long and so repetitive would be my main probably take away from this book if you're wanting to get into it. There is quite a huge twist in this book, which I had seen so many people talking about, and I was like, okay, well, what could that be? Like, I'm really interested to know. And it happened, and it was twisty, and it, it did surprise me, and it caught me off guard, but the way that it was handled was just crazy to me. Like, it was wild. Oh, if it, again, it was because the YA handling of, like, grief and trauma is tends to... Um, overwrite these things very quickly and like move past them very quickly. I would really like to highlight some of your thoughts um, and hopefully some of your positive thoughts to see what you guys got out of it that you really enjoyed and that maybe I missed. This one, you pretty much hit on all the points I just said, honestly. The writing style was poor, repetitive, and ultimately made the story very boring. Most of all, I'm disappointed by the fact that I do not feel like I learned much about the Syrian situation, which I was really hoping to going into this book. Um, the war at times appeared like a mere backdrop. And other people definitely felt that the writing is lyrical and immersive, yet it's not convoluted or difficult to understand. Um, people loved the romance, their love feels so gentle and tangible. I found that Salama's deep connection to her homeland and overwhelming grief at leaving uh, was really well portrayed and relatable. Someone else thought that the book was riddled with 2010 Tumblr-esque repetitive prose, chemistry-less romance, and overall clumsy and inaccurate attempts at representing the war in Syria. I feel like I gave this a very generous three star, but honestly, it's probably more of like a two and a half for me. I definitely did like following like Salama's journey and some of the choices that she has to make in her like decision to leave Syria and try to move away. A couple more romances that I wanted to talk to you about. So the first one, let's just get out of the way because I have like zero things to say about this one. I listened to To Have and To Hoax by 
Ooh, Martha Waters. That can't be right. Oh my god, it is right. I have into hoax. This sounded so cute, and I think this could have been really cute, but it was so freaking boring. This is a Regency era rom com, and I really wanted to like this. This sounds so cute. Tell me if this does not sound cute. So, a husband and wife have been married for a while however they're not in a good place in their marriage they are not getting along there is a very deep um misunderstanding it's a misunderstanding oh but regardless there is a very deep uh, wound at the heart of their relationship that they cannot get over because no one is freaking talking about it Regardless their marriage is not gone well And so one day when James I think is his name he falls off of his horse He has a little bit of a tumble all of James's dude friends send his wife Violet um, a letter being like yo your husband fell off a horse you might want to come get down here. It's not looking great for James. He fell off of his horse. That's serious. Violet is like, oh my god, my like, what if he dies and like we didn't talk about any of our issues and that's just, like the end of our story. She rushes down to, I don't know, Tilbury on the water, or some such name. She finds James completely fine. She's very angry at him, lets it all loose at him, and then she's like, you know what? For revenge and to like see if he even cares about me in return. I'm gonna fake tuberculosis. I'm gonna fake, is it tuberculosis? She takes to her deathbed, her sick bed. She like hires fake doctors. She puts on a whole sham shebang to like convince her husband that she's dying and like he kind of starts to take care of her. And like they just start to play all of these, I guess, is it a prank? <laughs> it's kind of a very serious prank. Like I'm dying. Probably telling your partner you have tuberculosis and you're like weeks away from coughing up your last drop of blood is not really that chill of a thing to do but i thought it was cute and funny the problem is that like the concept was just not executed very well and i thought it would be so much like i thought this would this just sound i don't know why it just sounded so cute to me it just sounded so cute to me and then it did not live up or deliver on any of the promises so i was pretty pretty upset again very repetitive very long and i listened to the audio of this the man's perspective for james was so i cannot tell you how aggravating it was point where i almost wanted to skip his chapters because the audiobook narrator was like insufferable to listen to i gave to have into hoax like two stars although i have heard that there is another book very similar to this one that executes this concept very well although i don't know what it is so if you know what it is please tell me the title i listened to as well a book that i got from book of the month and that is butcher and blackbird by Bryn weaver this was also supposed to be very fun very campy it was just such a weird mix of like sometimes i was so into it and sometimes i was so not into it so butcher and blackbird is not really like I wouldn't say it's a wholly novel concept, but it's a romance following two serial killers who at the start of the book, they don't know each other personally, but like they know of each other's work and they really admire the other person's work in the field of serial killing. So we have, um, what are their names? We have the Boston Butcher. He's known as the Boston Butcher and she's known as the Orb Weaver, I think, because she does weird things with like spider webs and eyeballs and all of that stuff. They're not killers who kill like you know your average person walking down the street there are people who take out other really awful people they're on uh, a mission to avenge like the human race i guess of the monsters among them so anyway they meet and they start talking and both of them are kind of just they have issues <laughs> obviously they have issues um but they realize that and they're like we're like kind of pent up and we're running out of bad guys to kill would you want to like host this competition once a year where we get together my weirdo brother gives us coordinates that we have to use and like clues to track down um a really bad person and take them out and the first person to kill the bad guy wins the competition kind of thing so they do and so you follow them over the course of like 
four years or something like that. Meeting up pretty much once a year, but then like texting and talking and sending letters back and forth the rest of the time. And it was just like fun. Honestly, there are moments in this book when like I laughed out loud. It is over the top and it's supposed to be over the top and very like silly. And I think she should have leaned into that a little bit harder, honestly, because there were some scenes in here that were just like, this is bizarre. It's very gory, but it's also very funny and disgusting. And then there were some parts in this where I was just like a little bit bored and the romance was honestly cute but that is butcher and blackbird i gave it like a good good three star next up i oh we have a book that i really 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 like which is really good and i'm really glad it was really good because i was really highly anticipating getting to it it's a non-fiction called big mall by kate black loved this so much that i went on like my wish list of like i want to own it physically kind of thing so it's a good sign when that happens when i listen to a book that i don't have and then i'm like i need to have that because i want to read it again um big mall so you guys know i eat up pretty much anything about um like architecture or just like different cultural studies of places buildings such as hotels asylums uh in this case mall really 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 cool if you're wary of nonfiction because you think it's like dry or you're just not a fan of the standard textbook uh formatting content style of nonfic don't be hesitant with big mall because what kate black does is combine like the essay like you know strictly formal essays or anything this book jumps all over the place and she really weaves her own personal experience of the mall into this as well so um a lot of this centers around west edmonton mall because that is the mall in which kate black grew up in and so she brings so much of her own experience so much of like very unique weird experience like living with north america's biggest mall as like your childhood thing that's just there and like she says that's kind of what edmonton in alberta is known for i've never been to west edmonton mall but like growing up in elementary school that's how i heard of like edmonton for the first time was because people were going like with their families to west edmonton mall and it was like crazy because the mall had like a theme park in it and hotels and roller coasters and so she takes west edmonton mall as kind of like her starting point and ultimately her like um, touchstone for everything that she talks about regarding the mall and what it means. Uh, we really talk about like capitalism, we talk about um, the space of the mall, I love those chapters and she actually references a lot of text that I used when I was writing and researching my thesis on Murakami's Dance 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 and Jean Reese's Good Morning Midnight because that was all about like the hotel and the non-place and the mall is another one of those places that fall into what the French theorist, uh, what's his face? Auger, I think, calls the non-place. So just so cool. I flipping love this. I think this is so interesting. It covers so many different facets of the mall. Good and bad. Obviously, it talks a ton about consumerism, shopping in general, the effect that the mall has had on our generation. Our malls dying? Like our malls die. I love the subreddit. Um and there's actually a whole website. I love the website deadmalls.com fascinating go search that like into your browser right now deadmalls.com so fun so cool like you know those tours on youtube that i don't know if like people are breaking into abandoned malls definitely that's totally what's happening sometimes but they'll just like film an abandoned mall and it's just so deliciously spooky and weird and like i mean the mall is pretty freaking weird in terms of west edmonton mall it dives into like definitely a lot of darker facets of the mall murders that have happened there there have been a lot of deaths in edmonton mall the effect of the mall on the environment and like on the land that it was built including indigenous land and yeah it was just honestly a really all-around study and on top of that like she inserts like i said so much of her own experience and so much of who she is and like what she believes and like she examines just what this culture has done to her and like how it's kind of molded a little bit of the person that she is i found myself relating so much to the author in very very specific ways um and there were just some passages in here that just i was just like wow let me rewind that again to listen to because that was great so overall four stars really enjoyed this i cannot wait to read this for 
myself um and it just it just sent me down memory lane as well because when i was little my grandma watched me a lot of the time like she babysat me and just spent so much time with me i just spent so much time with my grandma growing up she would take me to the mall in my hometown so often uh that mall that i not like grew up in and everything because i wouldn't say that i grew up in a mall but just that i spent so many hours in with her has now definitely turned into a dead mall it is kind of so dead and it's becoming actually it's kind of transforming into something else right now which is interesting but it just made me think about so much of my time with my grandma in the mall and like the artifice of it all but also the excitement i felt whenever she would like buy me a pack of pokemon cards um or just like going to the mall cafeteria i would always eat taco bell that was like the highlight of my childhood was like taco bell with grandma at the mall <laughs> and also going to see this one rug store there was a rug carpet store in the mall that had a, a koi pond the fish really being treated well i don't think so but there was this one um fish in particular who like was my friend <laughs> it was my friend and i would get to go to the mall and like i would put my hand in the water and he would just come up and like let me pet him he would literally let me pet him and that is like a core memory that I have and I would be so excited to go to this rug store to see this one fish um and it just really reminded me of the book because there's a whole section on animals kept in malls like why are there so many animals in malls they're just part of like the artifice and the spectacle of it all especially in West Edmonton Mall which has been very controversially keeping uh sea mammals and sea creatures and all different sorts is there a zoo in the mall i have actually never seen a picture of west edmonton mall i've just heard of it and so everything i'm like reading about in the book or like thinking about west edmonton mall i'm it's just imagined for me because i just really like this and it made me reflect on a bunch of stuff and i cannot wait to read this again so highly recommend big mall next up i read a book with my brother which we like enjoyed but not as much as the first book that we read together by this author because you guys know that we do like murder mystery detective solving videos together which has become just something that i mean i have a good time with I hope he has a good time with and if not i'm thankful that he does them with me so we read decagon house murders together this time by yukito ayatsuji so for our last video we actually read the mill house murders by the same author we were really impressed with the mill house murders and i was really looking forward to decagon house because this one is even more famed to be like a cult classic very popular this is really interesting and again it gets at my love of like weird architectural spaces because decagon house is a house that is a decagon it has 10 sides and it's really weird and it really reminded me of the torture chamber that the phantom builds in the phantom of the opera that's kind of how i was like imagining it because it's very discombobulating disorienting like you lose track of where you are in the house but regardless this this was honestly very dark academia and i really enjoyed that because this centers around seven university students who are all from different faculties are all studying different degrees but what unites them is their love of murder mysteries and so they have joined the murder mystery club at their university where they read murder mysteries they write them they review them and for this uh, field trip i guess in particular they are all going to this island where the decagon house is so the decagon house is on this island that was built by like a famous uh architect who was murdered died disappeared under mysterious circumstances a year prior i think to the start of the novel when they're going and so they're all going to stay in this weird house and get like spooked and write and just have a good time together that's until they start dropping dead so each of the characters is named after a famous detective writer um or mystery writer i should say and it was just really cool it was really fun i wish a little bit more had been done with that i wish it had been a little bit more meta I wish a lot more maybe i missed them but i just wish a lot more references would have been made to the uh inspiration and like to the mystery writers that they were named after in general i think that could have been played into a lot more i don't think this was as strong a mystery as the millhouse murders but i enjoyed it nevertheless i think ayatsuji is a very 
a competent writer. He knows what he's doing. And unlike Agatha Christie, no hate for Agatha, although my brother would say otherwise. I just think that with his mysteries, you can really piece it together yourself and you are capable of solving it. And it's not like the easiest thing in the world at times is solvable. Whereas with Agatha's mysteries, I just feel like we're not given all of the information needed. Um, and a lot of times it ends up feeling very cheap, like entertaining, but when you're trying to solve it for yourself and figure it out, it can be very frustrating. It was good. I gave it like, a, I'd say a low four star, but yeah, we enjoyed this and you will see that video soon of us solving it together. Everything that I have read recently, I do have a few more, but I'm going to save them maybe for probably a proper August wrap up or another recent read. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out and I'll see you very soon. Love you guys so much. Ciao.